Let's finish this. Now let's continue with cohesion. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Max and Dennis, uh, for presenting so far the U knowledge graph. And uh, uh, while we're describing the linked data and also the integration with Wikidata, uh, it it was clear to us that this was a very interesting environment uh, for, for instance, uh, setting up something related to the European uh, the European Union funds uh, and more specifically to cohesion funds to make really. Um, accept making all the projects that are financed by the EU cohesion uh, policy available to the citizens. So, uh, this is when we thought about uh, setting up Cohesio, and Cohesio is a is a platform that um, aims at increasing transparency and visibilities of projects uh, co-financed by the EU uh, cohesion policy. The EU cohesion policy, it's really a cornerstone of the, Euro, uh, the European Union, uh, you know, has been created 40 years ago specifically uh, to help uh, all the region, but more in particularly the one which were economically speaking lagging behind, allocating more resources from the European budget to those who are most in need of. Um, it uh, uh, supports uh, thousands uh, of projects every year across all European countries and all European regions for a total of uh, 315 billion euros, which makes up uh, about one third of the total EU resources uh, uh, for the programming period 2014-2020. We can go to the next slide. So, what is cohesion? So, the cohesion policy is managed, uh, is co-managed. It's a shared management uh, by the European uh, European Commission and the member states. In practice, national and local authorities in the uh, 27 EU member states are the one to choose uh, to which exact project. Uh, the EU uh, contribution and the national contribution is allocated from the European uh, fund, from the European Cohesion Funds, and so they have also an obligation to publish and update the list of projects and beneficiaries which are granted European, uh, European and national uh, and national support. These uh, are in the forms of list of operation and beneficiaries, and the goal of Cohesio is really to aggregate and standardize the information coming from the list of operation. I think here we've been a little bit optimistic saying dozens of files, I think there are hundreds of files <laughs> probably coming from uh, uh, dozens of different websites and data sources. Uh, they comes in different shape and format, CSV, uh, and many, many different, uh, many, many different ways. We even have, uh, for instance, some API uh, access. Uh, um, and so we've integrated and ingested all this data, which makes up uh, uh, probably the, the, the largest chunk of knowledge in the EU knowledge graph, uh, indeed 1.4 million uh, project. And we have also imported uh, many files. So these, in this case, are around 15 files, uh, which describes, uh, which describe, sorry, the vocabulary specific to the cohesion policy, such as, for instance, the category of intervention, the thematic objective, which are which are variables. Let's call it this way that are really uh, specific to the programming phase uh, of cohesion policy. Um, we've also ingested data um, about the geographical entities, and in this case, we have we have used the NATS classification, uh, which once again it varies slightly from some other geographical classification that uh, that might exist, but this is most appropriate indeed in the context of the EU. Uh, cohesion policy. And finally, we have linked whenever possible to the data coming from Wikidata in the manner that uh, Max just explained. To the next slide. So this is uh, one of the example of a project that uh, that we have imported. You see, I'm not going to read it uh, out loud, but this is indeed a protection of uh, of heritage in uh, in Poland. We have uh, the the English uh, the English name of it. So we have several properties attached to it. We've also, of course, have the uh, the, uh, the the national the national language. We can see then there is a instance of the cohesion property. The, the cohesion project is allows to um, having this project displayed onto the cohesion portal, we see that it's financed by the EU, that the country is Poland, and we have both the total budget and the EU contribution, both in national currency and in euros. And we can even see that there is a specific exchange rate to a specific point of time. So this allows, uh, in a way, for call customization of the uh, data modeling uh, part. Okay.
we can see that it started, for instance, in August uh, and terminated in July after two years, and it has a certain beneficiary, and further down you will see also the summary and the coordinates, the geographical coordinates. Okay, we can move to the next slide. We do enrich the data that come from the list of operations uh, published by the managing authorities. How do we enrich it? We basically enrich it by translating uh, the label and the description of the project from the national language into English. We compute the geographical coordinate based on the postal code or any other geographical information which is a, a required field within the list of operations published by, mem by member states and we also indeed deduce basically the NATS classification which is a hierarchical classification. I'll just make an example for Italy for instance Rome is a city in Lazio, Lazio is a region, uh, Lazio belongs to the macro uh, region center, center Italy and it becomes and it belongs to Italy which is the larger entity. And finally, uh, we also linked the, both the NATS regions and the beneficiaries to Wikidata in order to retrieve from Wikidata the, uh, for instance, description of a certain uh, beneficiary, for instance, a university, or uh, the description of a region. We can see this example in the same example we've just looked uh, at before. Uh, first of all, again, I will just show that if you click on all entry language, you have both the Polish, which is the na the national and the, the national version and the original version, but also the the English name. We have, for instance, uh, that it belongs to a certain NAT classification, and this NAT again is hierarchical, so that we can see that it belongs to another another region. And if we go back, for instance, uh, and scroll down to, towards the coordinates, we can give you a display indeed that the coordinate F pin computed and finally we can also go to the beneficiary we can see that the beneficiary was a certain in this case is i think is a church and so we have linked the beneficiary with wikidata and we are able to retrieve from wikidata some of information so for instance that this is indeed a church that was um, established in uh, uh, 1789 if i read correctly and uh, that for instance have an official website and if we click on this official website we will go to the website of course of the the entity the entity in question it's fine i guess that we can uh, move mm. to the next uh, to the next slide when we can give uh, uh, finally, a snapshot of, of Cohesio. So finally, essentially, Cohesio is a uh, web application, is a website for citizens uh, in the end. So if we move to uh, to the platform, to the online platform, we can see this is the current state of play uh, on uh, available already on uh, on the internet. So we can see that we have imported many different countries and you can explore the geographical entity. So for instance, if we click on one of the of the country it opens up a map at the nuts level we can go further down and click on one specific project and in this for instance we can see that there are multiple uh, information of course the one that come from the knowledge graph the title project description, the start date, the end date, uh, and the, the, the financing information. And finally, if we click on edit, we can go back to the U knowledge graph and authorized uh, user can, for instance, modify and, for instance, improve the summary and improve uh, uh, or even add more, uh, more information. Okay, these are things just to wrap up. If we can go to the next slide, yes, to summarize, basically we integrated the structured data from different data, sort, data sources into a uniform model, many hundreds of different uh, lists of operation into one single, let's say, repository. We enrich the data in various way, and in this way we have increased the value because, for instance, already the English translation make it accessible to many more people uh, uh, throughout the EU and not only. And of course, we've made this data openly accessible to citizens, but also to, um, to really to everybody, showing the impact that the EU funds and in the specific case, the EU cohesion policy 
policy as at the local and regional level. Thank you very much. Back to you, Ma, uh, Dennis. Okay, so to conclude, what we have shown is that a wiki base is uh, the key infrastructure behind the EU knowledge graph. Uh, we have shown uh, what is the current content of the EU knowledge graph, uh, what, uh, how we ingest uh, the data, how we maintain it fresh, and also what are all, all the services that we offer around uh, this, uh, this particular instance. And finally, we have seen how uh, the EU knowledge graph is, uh, is used to serve a very concrete use case, which is Cohesio, to basically let uh, projects financed by the European Commission, um, to make this uh, projects financed by the European Commission accessible to European citizens. We would like to thank uh, many people. So we put them in teams, so the Doris teams at DG Connect, the knowledge management team at DG Regio, and also Wikimedia Deutschland. Uh, which is behind uh, wiki uh, base uh, and that's it we we do the questions after the presentation of course <laughs> because basically we turned around we but, um, yes you prepare your questions and we will answer them after the talk yeah i see questions. there are some in the chats but i think it, it will be easier to answer them uh, live than writing inside the chat so bear with us until the end of georgina's presentation <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. And then we go for Georgina's presentation and after then for the Q&A. <laughs> Thank Hi, you Georgina. very much for all of you. <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Um, so it took me a while to get into this call. Let's see how long it takes me to work out how to share my screen. Um, give me a second. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, great. I see nodding. Yes. Um, okay, first of all, I'm so sorry that it took me so long to get in this call. You'd think after uh, almost two years of home office, I will have, I should have conquered all of the different tools available to do internet chatting and conferencing, but it appears uh, WebEx is still a weak spot for me. Um, so I'm going to talk about Wikibase. Um, this is a very original setup talking about a use case before actually talking about what Wikibase is, but let's go with it and we can um, spend some time at the end answering any questions you have. Um, I'm Georgina. I work at Wikimedia Germany. Um, we're a nonprofit organization based in Berlin um, and the German chapter of uh, the global Wikimedia movement. We work on lots of different projects, typically with the word wiki at the beginning, Wikipedia, uh, Wikibooks, Wikisource, um, lots of different projects that are all essentially aimed at this overall overarching goal um, to increase access to knowledge around the world. I work specifically in the software development department, um, and this is, it's not always the case that um, a Wikimedia chapter has a software development department, but we're lucky enough to have one. Um, and what we do in our department um, is really create innovative and useful open source software that takes us further or brings us further towards this goal of increasing access to knowledge. So we, we work on a number of different software projects. Um, but two core ones that uh, are definitely relevant to our conversation today are Wikidata and Wikibase. When I do these introductions, I always find it useful to start with a bit of a, um, a deep dive into Wikidata. It's difficult to understand Wikibase without talking about this large structured data project that we run. So I'm going to start there. Um, this is a, a Wikimedia project that was started back in 2012. In comparison to Wikipedia, it's quite different. It's filled with structured data. It's a knowledge base with free open data that anybody can use instead of long encyclopedic sentences about certain topics and Wikipedia articles. It's linked to other wiki, uh, wiki, other databases. As I mentioned, all of the data in there is available under a CC0 license, so anyone can use it, um, as we saw through the EU knowledge graph. It's based on statements and references, um, which I'll show it or I'll explain in further detail in the next few slides. It's both human and machine readable, it's multilingual, and it's also collaborative. So there's a large community of users who um, edit and maintain the data 
um, that lives in Wikidata and anybody can do that. It's a, um, a lovely looking wiki where anybody can set up an account and edit um, the data stored in Wikidata. This is what it looks like. Um, as of this morning, um, we had over 95 million data items living in Wikidata. And um, as I mentioned, as a collaborative project, we have a large community of volunteers who pour in a lot of time, effort, um, and also technical um, skills to maintain the data that lives in Wikidata. I think around uh, the latest I checked was around 25,000 active editors. And in that sense, we define active editors as somebody with more than one edit per month. How is data modeled? Um, this is what an item looks like in Wikidata. You have um, a concept, in this case, a person, Maya Angulu. She's given a very um, specific or very um, individual number. That's a Q followed by a number. And then you can add um, further kind of information about that concept, in this case, Maya. So, for instance, you can add via a property that she's an instance of a human. So this um, triple structure with an item, property, and a value um, is is what is how in, essentially information is modeled in Wikidata. You can then add further information beyond um, this triple structure through qualifiers and references. For instance, here the award that um, Maya Angelou received. Um, you could specify when she received that award, as well as um, provide a reference so that somebody can, for instance, double check that this is actually the case. And, um, you know, in the spirit of linking um, and uh, the linked open data web, what's really cool in Wikidata is that you can link items to each other. And here you can see that naturally um, Maya Angulu can be linked to lots of different separate items that live in Wikidata. Paul Dufay, her spouse, St. Louis, where she was born, um, this award she received, and also, of course, she's linked to the item of humans, that she's an instance of a human. So you have this large structured database filled with over 95 million data items or points. Um, and what do you do with it? Well, you can query it, which is um, quite cool. You can ask questions of it and you can do this using the Wikidata query service. Of course, this requires um, some Sparkle skills, um, but of course, in recent months, we've done some um, intense development work to try and um, make it possible for people without these, um, these skills to also query Wikidata. And that's what ended up being or we created in the end the Wikidata Query Builder. Um, this is what it looks like. You can essentially build a query um, uh, instead of writing one and, um, and find out a certain answer to a question that you have. Some that come up with in the past that are always quite good at clarifying or um, kind of elucidating on what kind of questions can be asked of Wikidata. These are examples from the Wikidata community. If you've ever wondered about it, airports named after a person and then looked at the gender of those individuals. Um, here is the answer to your question. Um, this is a map with lots of blue dots. Those are representing those that identified as a male and then a lot less orange dots for those that identify as a female. If you've ever wondered about the cause of death of members of noble families, um, you can create a visualization like this and find out tuberculosis seems to be a common one. Um, but of course, a less common ones like the 1980 flu and measles. Another one um, here is a timeline of, oh, I'm going to butcher the German, uh, the French pronunciation, I think. Um, over the 21st century, you'll see that we have one, for instance, 2002, Venezuela. Um, but of course, more recent ones um, in Myanmar in 2021. So, um, what is Wikibase? Wikibase is the software that we developed to run Wikidata. Um, naturally, then, it means that um, it was developed back in 2012 because we developed it for Wikidata, and that's how long that project has been running. Um, and we continue to develop and maintain it today as well. It's free, open source, anybody can use it, um, just as the EU Knowledge Graph team has done so. Um, but what's kind of changed over the year, years is that while it was originally um, developed for Wikidata, it now powers a wide range of different linked open data projects. It's um, available for anyone to use, um, and that's really where we're going with this. We're really interested in, in you know, spending time, resources, developing Wikibase as a product in its own right, as well as um, you know, recognizing that there's a community of Wikibase users who are separate to those 
um, that are active on Wikidata. When we talk about the kind of things that Wikibase offers, naturally um, you'll kind of see um, similarities with uh, some of the um, basic things I mentioned about Wikidata, but essentially what one can do with Wikibase is create and manage your own linked open knowledge base. Um, it has a flexibility in terms of the data model. So, um, you know, you could create essentially an ontology and a set of properties that suit your very specific data set. It also has the media wiki interface that um, most of us are familiar with via Wikipedia and Wikidata, which means that it's really easy as a user to access and update the data that lives in the Wikibase instance. And just like on Wikidata, you can sparkle it um, or you can query it using sparkle. Um, so you can ask questions um, and, and um, essentially access the data in your Wikibase instance and find out and create new insights based on that data. What is it ideal for? Um, if you have a structured data collection that would really benefit from you know, bespoke properties or a really flexible data model, um, then Wikibase might be really great for you. Also, if you're interested in linking databases to external sources, um, for instance, um, through this uh, referencing part of the, of the item that you can add. Also collaborative projects. So if you have lots of different people editing the data that lives in your Wikibase instance and maintaining it, um, then Wikibase can be a really great tool. If you're interested in having the data living in your Wikibase instance, both machine and human readable, um, it's a great tool for that. You can create bots and tools um, based on the data in your Wikibase instance, as well as have humans access it and also make sense of the data in there. And of course, multilingual labeling is also possible with Wikibase. Some examples. Um, the EU Knowledge Graph is, of course, a big example, but there are other um, institutions and projects that are making use of Wikibase. One is Enslaved. Um, this is a, a project that's really been focused on um, bringing together disparate databases in one place, um, and all of the data that uh, is covered in the Enslaved.org project is, covers the history of the transatlantic slave trade. Um, at the moment, it has over 850,000 records about peoples, events, places, and sources. Another example is Rhizome. Um, they were actually one of the early adopters of Wikibase. Um, they really recognized that the software used to power Wikidata might be useful in other contexts. Um, they started using it back in 2015 for the, they have an archive of born digital art and, and in general working on lots of different digital preservation activities. For them, the flexible data model um, of Wikibase was really interesting because it meant that they could really create properties um, and an ontology that really suited um, their specific collection of digital, uh, sorry, born digital art. And another last example is the German National Library. Um, they're using, or they're at least piling Wikibase for their integrated authority file. It's, um, basically, um, German speaking, huge file that tells people or gives guidance on how to cat catalog um, across GLAM institutions in German speaking countries. And the idea really is here um, to really ensure collaborative maintenance of the, of the authority file. So instead of having a closed off authority file, really allowing, um, you know, people, volunteers out in the community to also edit that um, authority file as well. So um, this is Wikibase, Wikidata, this is how they relate to each other um, and also some projects. But I also wanted to spend some time today talking about what we're planning, what the future looks like, and what really our intentions are with Wikibase, and also how to get involved if you are interested. Over the course of this year, we spent some time really sitting down and thinking about our strategy with Wikibase for Wikidata as well. But since we're talking mostly about Wikibase today, I wanted to highlight um, you know, what we're aiming for when it comes um, to Wikibase. You can read the whole strategy, of course, if you have some time. Um, it's an interesting read and it really sets out our priorities for the next few years. But essentially what we're really wanting to do um, is I'll read as follows. Wikibase makes it easier than ever before to create, connect and grow a collaborative linked knowledge base. We want to enable the co-creation of the world's largest knowledge graph of free and open data, which we use to create new knowledge for the world. So a lot of our efforts will stem from this vision for Wikibase. 
a related concept or a one part or one kind of piece of the puzzle is what we refer to or what's commonly referred to as federation. Um, so this is the ability for different um, wiki based instances to essentially talk to each other. And when we say talk to each other, we're really talking about linking content occurring across the instances and also reusing um, different ontologies. And all of this, you know, when we mention federation, this all falls within the topic of federation or what's sometimes referred to as federated wiki bases. We've taken some initial steps to make this possible. Um, back in 2020, we did a lot of work on what's referred to as federated properties. This is essentially the possibility that when you set up your Wikibase instance, you can um, adopt properties from an existing Wikibase instance. That could be Wikidata. So you could essentially take the ontology or the properties that are used on Wikidata and use them in your own Wikibase instance or, or also from some other Wikibase instance. It doesn't have to be Wikidata. This is what it looks like. You have a local item in your custom Wikibase, and then you can essentially choose from properties um, that, are, that are on Wikidata um, and then use those in, in your own instance. We quickly realized though that there are definitely some limitations um, to this feature, um, which is, and the main one being that um, there's very much an interest in being able to mix custom uh, properties or bespoke properties in a Wikibase instance with properties from another one, um, in this case, for instance, Wikidata. Um, and so that's what a lot of our development work this year has been uh, focused on developing a second version of the feature that makes it possible for you to both add um, properties from another Wikibase instance, as well as local properties of your own. Another big focus area for us um, is Wikibase Cloud. This is a new platform that's um, based on WB Stack code. Um, WB Stack was a project that was uh, started by um, a colleague of mine, but in his volunteer capacity. Um, and it's essentially a hosted Wikibase server service where anybody can set up an account and quickly, um, you know, string up a Wikibase instance. Before it was a, a volunteer project, as I mentioned, and now it's a project um, called Wikibase Cloud that's managed and maintained by us. Um, so that we continued work on that this year and into next year and also into the future. Essentially, what we're trying to do here is um, offer a Wikibase as a service platform to make it easier for people who are interested in using Wikibase um, to set up um, their Wikibase instance and, and add to it. We recognize, or this comes from a space where we really recognize that there are some technical um, skills really required to make use of Wikibase in its current form. Um, and so the, the Wikibase cloud idea is really about kind of simplifying that proce process and also trying to ensure um, that it's not just a, a tool for um, highly technical projects. This will launch in early 22. So keep your ears open for more info on that. There is a growing Wikibase community. Um, as I mentioned, um, you know, Wikibase was developed for Wikidata and it's only in the kind of the last few years that um, we've recognized that um, Wikibase is a product in its own right and also has its own community. And that community also needs its own um, separate spaces where they can talk about all things related to Wikibase. Um, and there's a few different channels to do that. So if you're interested in hearing more about Wikibase Cloud, but also engaging with other community members, you can do this via the community user group, the mailing list, the Telegram channel, or of course the monthly live sessions that are organized by my colleague, Mohammed. There are also lots of resources um, available if you are interested in starting your own Wikibase project. Um, we have detailed documentation um, that lives on mediawiki.org that details how to set up a Wikibase instance using the Docker images or manually. There's also a, an FAQ there that um, anybody can have a look at. They're based on questions that we've fielded in the past. And we've also created a space um, where if you are looking for technical support, you can go um, support providers can add their um, name there as well as services. Um, and you can get in contact with them if you're looking for technical support with your project. This is the last slide. Um, I just wanted to say, if you are uh, thinking, mm, I see potential for Wikibase um, in your area of work, please do feel free to reach out to us in the partnerships team. 
um, that's me. Um, and we'd really be happy to have a chat with you about what your idea is and also to see how we could help. Um, in terms of reaching out to us, you can reach out to us at SWE underscore partnerships at wikimedia.de. I have a next slide, um, but it seems that is obsolete now. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Yes. That should have worked. Um, yes, that was that's it for me. Um, I see that we've just made it in the nick of time, only four minutes until three o'clock, but there's definitely some time for questions. So I open the floor to questions. Yes. Aniko, do you want to? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so maybe uh, go for the questions in order um, from the chat, uh, or um, I don't know if, if you have any preferences to start uh, with the ones related to either uh, Wikibase or to Cohesio or EU Knowledge Graph, or we can just go in order maybe and take them one by one. Okay. Okay, all right. So then uh, let's see. Uh, I see that a couple of questions were already replied uh, during the presentation. So uh, thank you for the comments. Uh, then the next one is, um, Magnus is asking for the links to the instance of linked data implementations in the EU. So I think I got it, so that's no yeah, problem. You're okay, good. yeah, you got it, yeah, perfect, so. thanks. <laughs> yeah. Then from Andrea Perego, how much does Wikibase or Wikidata support classes and properties defined in other vocabularies, such as Dublin Core, FOF, uh, W3C, Organization Ontology, and so on? So maybe I can answer this. So <laughs> basically the answer is uh, it doesn't support currently, uh, so you cannot really so semantic web people, I think this is the most concern of semantic web people is that you cannot reuse other vocabularies than, than PIDs or QIDs. So uh, there is some effort in this direction, but in the current implementation, this is not possible. If you want. All right, thank you. Maybe uh, can I just yes. quickly add there. Um, Yes, what Dennis said is completely right. Um, and until now, what has often been the workaround or what we've recommended um, to people is to use the same as property um, in their Wikibase instance to help with this. But of course, for certain projects, this is not really a useful workaround. Um, but yes, it's definitely something that we're aware of. And as Dennis mentioned, um, there's definitely community efforts um, in this direction to recognize that this is something um, that would be cool if you could basically that it would be possible within Wikibase to um, to link your ontology with um, outside ontologies. Thank you. Then the next question is about a chatbot, if it's available in Wikibase. Is there a chatbot? Uh, it's not really a chatbot. What we've shown is the question answering service. Uh, and no, it's not a core part of Wikibase. It was developed by Denise and colleagues. So it's something that you have to install on top of the core Wikibase instance, but then it can indeed be integrated also in chatbots, but it's a separate uh, software, piece of software. Thank you. Then... About the mapping of properties, I think uh, Georgina answered already a bit with the federated queries. Uh, this will be in the right direction, but Currently, yes, we have another properties for instance of, but in the end, we can mark it as a, a similar or the same as instance of in Wikidata, so it's transparent. We don't really care that it's P31 or 35 or whatever. Uh, maybe it's annoying to remember by, by heart, uh, <laughs> oh, what is again the number of the property for instance of, or it's, uh, it's not the same as in Wikidata. But I think with the federated uh, review, if we start, if we would have started in 2022, we we would have reused immediately the properties for Wikidata instead of duplicating them. But it was not available at the time. <laughs> I think that's the answer. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, then I see that a couple of next questions were already replied. Um, but uh, Xavier raised the, the question that got a little bit of, uh, on a 
further converse, conversation mm -hmm. afterwards. Uh, so is it clear uh, the distinction for the end users, what data is from Wikidata source and what is from an EU source, EU authoritative source? Yes. Denise, you want to answer? Oh. Yeah, so basically okay. today uh, it is only clear if you look at the history, because uh, all data that is imported from Wikidata is imported uh, by the Wikidata bot. Uh, but it is true that if you don't look at the history, it is not so clear uh, which data comes from uh, Wikidata and which does not come from Wikidata. So one option could be to add reference to all of the statements that we imported which is something that uh, we could do. Uh, it was just not a, a need that we had at the beginning because what we we basically imported concepts from Wikidata basically to describe vocabulary that we need uh, to use anyway, like the DGs or the countries or what the European Union is and so on and so on. This was our initial aim, but uh, it is true that we could uh, change this to make this more uh, clear. Yeah, so the technically the possibility is already there with the reference mechanism. It's just that it's underused uh, at this stage. We had all the priorities, but since it's growing, I think it's a, it could be a good idea to investigate more this uh, sources uh, option. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think that it makes sense to keep a unique Wikibase instance at the Commission level or EU institution level? Of course, that's a good question that we raised already with the linked data solutions uh, when with this uh, proof of concept, uh, they could have started their own wiki base, but just for small proof of concept, there is a lot of technical uh, overhead, like it's also the direction of the wiki base as a service uh, cloud uh, option. So I don't know, uh, because I think it makes sense to mutualize or to reuse this uh, EU knowledge graph for other projects, but at the same time, it was not started with this aim. Uh, so we are not really offering Wikibase as a service inside the, the commission right now. We have our instance, uh, we are happy to help, but if we get 100 uh, new requests for projects, we do not have the capacity to deliver. So it's, it's a question we are reflecting on uh, but I hope also the possibility to use the Wikibase as a service straight from Wikimedia Deutschland will help for small projects, at least in the proof of concept phase. And then our instance can be used for also if needed. Uh, but it's more it's more a political uh, conversation rather than a technical one, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and I think it also replied uh, Maria Claudia's next question uh, about a federated knowledge graph uh, uh, for the different data spaces in the EU data strategy. So it's the same uh, topic more or less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any more questions? Um, maybe because in the in the chat there are more comments uh, as for now as I see. Ah, yes. Uh, what kind of topical or thematic focus do you see for the EU knowledge graph? Well, it's meant to be very broad in theory, so anything uh, EU related, but in practice, it's uh, very much centered on Coesio uh, right now, but it could evolve. Uh, we are not limiting it uh, as long as it's EU related, uh, I think. We are not restricting to one topic or one DG or whatever in the spirit. Uh, in, in yeah, I would quickly uh, also mm -hmm. jump on that because, of course, with the, the repository that we have created about you, uh, co-finance project uh, being the, the largest uh, within the, EU, the the knowledge graph, of course, uh, there is a lot that could be done uh, in uh, categorizing various projects. So, for instance, some effort in this case we are envisaged um to do some effort in really categorizing what is the um what are projects about beyond also the uh, the available already uh, properties that for instance come from uh, uh from the list of operations so really try to categorize them in a, in a smarter way and uh, so the topics are really the 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 the, the you knowledge graph is meant to be broad but within that we can have many many topics and uh explore uh, all the the possibility of this amazing uh, installation 
Okay, yeah, thank maybe you. I want also, I would like to say some words about the importance as, as a citizen more. So basically we are speaking about 300 billion euros that are spent by the European Commission. I mean, this data should really be openly accessible in the best way we are speaking about the money that all that we as taxpayers are basically giving and which is distributed across Europe. So it is important to know what happens with this money and who gets this money and that there is absolute transparency on this. And this, I think, is the most important part of, of this cohesion project. Could I add a comment? For what I am from Sweden, and in Sweden we see projects done with open data, and they are a catastrophe. It's they, they deliver nothing, and I think we need to have much more metadata about projects so we can see how other countries are de delivering, uh, doing nearly the same or something, or, or what the output is and so on. Uh, do you have a backlog where we can add question or requests like that? Then, because now I think it's impossible to to follow up what are other countries doing in the same area as we are what do they deliver and so on and and now we have a budget we have a, a label that's doesn't make us happy i think you understand my question i would like to have more i would like to see a useful tool now you can compare how much sweden gets how much portugal get and so on but i can't get on the project level to see what they deliver really yeah no exactly i think i think what you're saying it's it's really important that the open uh, open platform like this one really go one step farther just not aggregating the uh, the data but uh, also uh, and nurture this data and uh, enrich this data to create more knowledge and uh, and offer them to 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 users. So I really invite you to check out uh, Cohesio and see. And then if you have any suggestion, feel free to to write to us the present in the presentation. I'm sure that there are our contacts. But uh, yes, this is uh, is it all the the the, ob the overall objective of Cohesio indeed. It's about uh, open up this data and enrich this data to create more knowledge. The, the feeling I have is, for example, I'm uh, using Wikidata a lot and we speak insaneous a lot. We chat about everything. <laughs> but when I see what people in Sweden do, they don't have so much communication with the rest of Europe, I think. I think we need to start share ideas, get yes. this moving faster. In this spirit, we have uh, in the Coesio project, we have a community of practice with uh, the managing authorities of all countries. So they are involved. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's not just one project that we do at the commission and then we put it online. We are in discussion with each country individually and mm -hmm. they can see also what the others are. And we organize some workshops with representatives of mm -hmm. all countries to discuss the best practice uh, and so on. So I think this goes in this direction maybe it's not enough but it's a start to have this kind of conversation with all the countries and we see a lot of discrepancies be between countries so mm -hmm. they can also see oh these other people are doing it like this okay uh, it's, it's a good idea we could improve this and this so it's a start at least mm -hmm. uh, there is one Yes. There is one question in the chat about the comparison between Wikibase and other knowledge graph databases, e.g. Neo4j. So maybe just to make this clear. So Neo4j is just a graph database. So basically it's it's the analogous would be the query service, but Wikibase is much more. It is the UI, it allows to edit the knowledge collaboratively, it has auto-completion to search, it has the history. So Wikibase is a graph database plus many, many, many more things. And this is what makes Wikibase cool. Um, yeah, just that. Yeah, yeah. Weekly. Knowledge Thank graph you. and graph database are different concepts indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Hmm. Are there any more questions? From the participants, no? <laughs> or comments, any ideas that you have? 
maybe just to say that the Cohesia will be officially launched uh, in March 2022. Uh, so I'll really invite everybody, all the participants, uh, Georgina and, and you and Nico to, to give a look to the to this to this website and uh, explore uh, how uh, how cohesion uh, cohesion money is is spent and uh, you might be uh, find you you know that something really really close to you has been financed by the EU uh, cohesion policy the bus you've been hoping to hoping on the the tram or even you know <laughs> um, some of your friends have been uh, participating in a uh, uh, you know vocational training that was financed by the EU so really invite everybody uh, it will be launched during the cohesion forum in uh, in March 2022 so it will be a nice uh, opportunity to have uh, this vocal and uh, communicate it to a very very large uh, large audience yeah that's very good news and thank you <laughs> Roberto Nico I have a question yes um I was wondering if um um, our guests know about the data we have in Huisu and if the European Huisu could be the, the source because it is the authoritative source for the uh, for the craft and for Wikimedia as well. So we have there in the publications office biggest knowledge graph seller as you probably have heard of it. We have everything and up to date so all the institutions the coordinates the the people and everything is 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 already linked open data so i was wondering if you could consider the seller and who is who was uh, as for the update a regular update of what you need there instead of actually updating it manually no sure I... we we investigated the, the seller some time ago but not recently uh, so, yes, uh, I don't know exactly what is, is there, but if, if, yeah, if we have uh, all the, this data about buildings that is the authoritative uh, source, uh, then definitely we should. Uh, we were easy. quite busy yeah. with the Coisio part, so we left. Yeah, uh, it saves you a lot of time and money. Uh, no, no, no. We, so, do, so, it, so. we do, do it officially for all institutions and okay. for all citizens, yeah. so it should avoid the. Uh, okay. Thank you uh, to draw our attention to Cellar again. Uh, it's a, a thing we have to to do. Yes, <laughs> thank you. I have a I have a side note, maybe according to for this. I, I think I would like to see an effort to basically link information in Cellar to Wikidata, because basically the European Publication Office is providing authoritative data, but Wikidata is mostly seen by the public. And having links between the two would be great and would maybe uh, also first make the data that is published more, uh, pub more easy to access by the public because Wikidata is accessed by many, many people. And it would also move many people maybe from Wikidata back to the seller uh, data because there are links that are discoverable. And uh, I think this is important, but okay. It's a, Just a comment on this because actually it's uh, it's already an ongoing activity in our team. Uh, so Eurovoc is already linked to Wikidata. Uh, we are in the process of linking other authority tables uh, that we have to Wikidata as well. Uh, so we hope that in the near future more and more resources will be linked. So currently Eurovoc is already available in Wikidata. Yeah. Good. But I guess for this is uh, is a meeting which has needs to be set with Mark Kuster and uh, the seller team. But obviously, we have the obligation to publish on behalf of our stakeholders. Now, I don't know where we publish uh, else than uh, the authoritative side, but definitely the links are very welcome. So I think I know, Aniko, if you're the contact point, maybe a specific meeting with uh, Mark Kuster and company should be welcome. Yeah, yes, exactly. So I mean that the alignments, so the links are available already. Yeah. Of course, it would be great to see even more, um, as everybody also said. I mean, the idea of Wikidata as a kind of linked hub um, or a linking hub um, is really something that we're interested in as well. At, you know, at the, I mentioned today that Wikidata has over 95 million items in there. 
Um, we also recognize that not everything belongs in Wikidata, but another way of kind of connecting to it is via these external identifiers. So um, we definitely encourage linking to Wikidata. We would love to see more of that. And there is another comment um, that it would be interesting to explore the complementarity between the current initiative and the one we have with TRR, tracking of research results in the R&I about research project outputs. I don't know if you have any comments on yes. this. Maybe again quickly comment on that. Uh, also, I've been that uh, Antola has been writing to to search in the in the chat, and that, yes, we are uh, as cohesion team are exploring some complementarity, for instance, with the research and innovation. Um, and uh, for instance, we had uh, a session a session during the the region uh, the the European uh, Week for Regions and Cities, in which we basically not compare, but presented to the public both cohesion and uh, uh, matchmaking uh, matchmaking tools uh, that allows, for instance, uh, users to um, to understand uh, how Horizon and Interreg uh, uh, projects uh, are financed. So in this way, yes, definitely more integration is uh, is uh, envisaged, let's say, and uh, of course, uh, very much uh, useful, I would say. Maybe I can intervene if you hear me. Yeah, sure. Yes. Uh, I'm Sergio from DGRTD, and basically I'm replying to uh, this uh, question about the TRR. So to Roberto and to Anne, uh, I'm aware about the matchmaking tools. Basically, it's not uh, it's something that's run by uh, uh, Daniel in in in, uh, in the unit. Uh, what I'm talking about is is more. Uh, we we have built since the couple of years now a, a knowledge graph, or at least uh, two knowledge graphs that are, we are merging right now about all the projects uh, that we have in research and innovation. Uh, but project means that we, of course, use the metadata, but all the inside you know, that we can get from this project. So we have built billions of uh, entities about uh, after text mining, machine learning, and so on and so on. So basically, we build uh, a kind of a comprehensive analysis of this project. And uh, one of the big challenges we are tackling now uh, since a couple of months for the coming year is to be able to uh, widen the expertise we have on this project by combining the information about the research at the EU level with the member states' research portfolio. So we are looking into the portfolio they have, complementarity, what are the gaps and so on. So it means that uh, we, we try not to open the door. At this stage, what we have done so on this project is not public yet because we still have a lot of information about the researchers and, and you know, uh, GDPR kind of consideration. But the aim of the, at the end of the, the game of the, the game would be to open it as much as possible to the public. But at this stage, the most challenging thing is for us to interconnect more information coming from member states. And you know, one of the challenges would be that uh, we have to deal with the how can we exchange this data, what kind of format, what kind of uh, expertise is available in different countries. So it's time 27 the number of issues we have in, in general in the house <laughs> because we need to uh, make everybody agree on, on, on how we proceed. And this is why I'm, I'm looking at this possibility to see how we can start to build some uh, elementary bridges uh, mm -hmm. on how to get into the relationship with the member states uh, for importing, exchanging data, what would be the uh, issues, the, the pitfall associated with this kind of exercise, in order to see if we can really continue to extend this uh, portfolio. So for the moment, we are inside, we extend to non-research and innovation program, and we are also tackling a couple of member states to start with, modestly, I would say. So this is uh, slightly different from what is in the matchmaking, but of course, there are similar components. We are talking about the same in-house in project, of course. That's that's very very interesting. I think that is there are a lot of synergies to explore, uh, and I think that uh, the, the problems that you that you mentioned we have also encountered in the in the communication with member state because of course we are aggregating. I was saying hundreds of uh, of different files which are published in uh, dozens different uh, websites and have um, basically different templates and uh, of course harmonization. Um, it, of the information and access to information is key to have something that is efficient, that is stable over time, that, that, that does not require the human intervention every one, two months to adapt uh, uh, the code to um, to actually pick, the, pick this this data and analyze it. So, I think it's something that we can um, we can explore further. And uh, when it comes, for instance, to evaluating the impact of uh, of data, of course, we have a little bit more data because it's 
the the research and innovation are generally direct management uh, uh, funds and so in a way the access to data is not intermediated by a member state or a managing authority and so in this way i think your experience will be also useful uh, uh, to our exercise when it comes for instance yes to categorize the data in a, in a certain way so happy to to definitely explore it uh, bilaterally later on okay thank you and thank you for bringing uh, it on any other questions or comments no if not then Thank you, everyone. So thank you for all our speakers uh, for these really, really interesting presentations and uh, and also for the brainstorming afterwards and for all your comments and ideas for the future improvement. Uh, and also for the participants who joined the meeting now uh, and also for your comments and questions in the chat. So it was really live and thank you for the conversation. Uh, we will share, of course, the recorded session and also the slides afterwards. So we will send it to all of you. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you again. See you at the next event. <laughs> so you will be informed and it's going to be only next year. So thank you very much and have a nice afternoon and continuation. Thank, thank you. Everyone. Thank you all for having me. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.